Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be going over using exponential and logistic models. Um, and, and actually, we're not going to really be using them. Um, we're just going to be using your graphing calculator to determine what that model would be. So in this video, I'm going to use a TI Inspire. And we'll see how to determine the model for the TI in, in the TI Inspire. So my first example, the data below give a number of bacteria in millions found in a certain culture. We have our time and our bacteria. So we're going to determine the mathematical model for these data, and then we'll use the model to determine the doubling time of the culture. So um, let me go ahead and bring out my calculator here. And on your calculator, we're going to go ahead and do a new document. I will not save this document. And I'm going to add a list and spreadsheet. Go up to A. Hit enter and I'm going to type in time. Enter. And I'm going to put in our data for time. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to go up to B. And I'm going to put, um, let's put BAC for bacteria. I could put in all of bacteria if I wanted to, um, but we'll just put BACT. And remember to go down here, not enter right there. And let's say 5815. So 5815, 26, and 48. Okay, now that I have my data in my calculator and my spreadsheet, I am going to create a new page and I'm going to go data and statistics and it's going to give me my data. I'm going to use my little scroll here to scroll all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to ask for my time variable. That's going to be my X and then I'm going to go over to the corner here and ask for my bacteria to be my Y and there we go. We've got our scatter plot. So now that we have our scatter plot we're going to want to create the model. And remember that a model, a mathematical model, is an equation. Not a picture or a figure, it's an equation. So we need to come up with this equation. Now notice this is an exponential growth function. So we're going to go to Menu, Analyze my graph, give me a regression, and I want that to be an exponential. So hit Enter, and here's my exponential. We grab this guy bring it up here and now we have our exponential function so we're gonna go ahead and just write that in here okay so we've got um, y equals 4.78 times 1.77 to the x power. Now a lot of times we don't really want it in this form. We want to have it in y equals y sub 0 e to the kx. And this is kind of the general form for um, growth and decay where y sub 0 is your initial population and k is a constant and x is your time. So if we want it in E form, the, the, way, the way we can convert this is we can leave the 4.78 and then we'll do E raised to the ln of 1.77 and then multiply by that by x. So notice if we do E to the ln, this 1.77 drops out. Okay, So that's one way of, of doing that um, to convert it to E. But basically this is, this is our answer here. Okay, so now um, let's say that we want to find, determine where this doubles. Well, if you are using um, a, a CAS version, okay, we're going to want to um, get in a calculator. So we'll bring in a calculator. And we want to do this in the calculator menu again. So we'll go down to statistics, stat calculations. Exponential regression, hit enter. Our Y list, our, I'm sorry, our X list is time. Our 
our Y list is bacteria. We're going to store it in F1. And we're just going to tab all the way till we get to OK. All right, so it gives us the same numbers here. So now if we want to um, determine the doubling, okay, let's go back here, remove that out of our way. Um, we want to determine the doubling time. Now the doubling time is how long is it going to take for the bacteria to double in population. So let's go back to the idea that in this, in this uh, formula, this number here is the initial population. So what I'm asking for here in the doubling time is if we doubled this population, this is going to be our y value. So 2 times 4.78 equal to 4.78 times 1.77 to the x. So if we're looking for to find out when the doubling time is, we're looking for when will the initial population double. So the way we solve this is we have to divide 4.78 first. So if we do that, the 4.78 is just going to kind of, you know, simplify out. We're going to have 2 equals 1.77x. We can take the log of both sides. So ln of 2 equals ln of 1.77, and then the x comes down, and we would divide over. So then our x, our time, is going to be ln of 2 over ln of 1.77. So let me bring my calculator back up here. And I can do that. Control ln of 2. Um, divided by ln of 1.77. And I get 1.21. Now, if, if I wanted to be crafty and I'm using my, um, my, my CAS here, I could just have it solve it for me. So we'll do solve. Um, we'll do solve parentheses 2 times 4.78 equals 4.78 times parentheses 1.77 close parentheses raised to the x power and I want to solve that comma for x and I get 1.2 so it'll do all that work for us if we wanted to okay so that is um, that is a, an exponential model okay so let's look at another one here Okay, so our next example here is a certain type of moss is growing in a pond. The following is a table and the number of days and the amount of area in the moss in the pond. Create a model to represent the area of the moss versus the number of days in the pond. So let's go and we're going to um, go back to our TI, our TI Inspire. And um, up here, I'm going to do this as time in days. Enter in my data. And if you don't remember how to get into a spreadsheet, just go back in the video and, and uh, it'll tell you how. So then we're going to go area. Okay, now that we have it in our spreadsheet, we're going to go and create a new page. Data and statistics. Down here we have time. Time is almost always going to be on the x-axis. So whenever we see time, we're usually going to put it on the x-axis. Then the area. And wow, this is an interesting graph. Notice here that this graph doesn't go up and continue up forever. This goes up and then starts to taper off. In fact, it should make sense that it starts to taper off because the pond only has a certain amount of area. Once the moss covers the entire pond, there's no more pond for the moss to grow. So the moss kind of stops growing. So it slows down as it grows. So this is a different type of function. It's not an exponential. If you remember from our 12 basic graphs, this is a logistic model. 
So we're going to go to menu. We're going to analyze, regression, show logistic. We're going to use D is equal to zero. Although we don't have a zero in any of our data, we're just going to use this one. It's a little bit safer. And there we go. We've got we've got our uh, our logistic graph here, and we've got our function. So, oops, I don't want to do that. Let's show that function again. Okay, so we're going to write we're going to write our function down here, our model, y equals. 1015.1 all over 1 plus 19.98 times e to the negative 0 0.089 x so in general in general all most logistic functions are in this form y equals C over 1 plus A E to the negative K X. And we will go over what each of these C, the A, the negative K, and what all this stuff means when we take a look at some graphs of logistic functions in my insight in, in our class. Um, in the next video, I'll probably go over some specifics on logistic functions and what you can see and what, what you can't. What are the limits of growth? All those kind of uh, vocabulary. But for now, you've got some information on how to get each of these models using your TI Inspire. Thanks again for joining me, and hope to see you again.